All right, so I'm going to start this off by asking a question. How many of you have ever seen a TED Talk before, live or online? All right, well, it seems as if the majority of you have. Now, usually talks derive themselves from facts, as in the speaker usually provides a copious amount of sources to prove whatever he or she is trying to claim. But what I'm going to try to claim today can't be proven by facts, both statistical or logistical. It can only be proven, and I'm going to try not to sound cheesy here, through what we hold in our hearts and the history that has unraveled before us. What I'm going to try to prove is the belief of nationalism. So defined by my sophomore social studies teacher as love of one's country, nationalism is the small things we do to pay tribute to the nation we live in, examples being Independence Day, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, and etc. In this sense, it acts as almost the underlying root of our heterogenic society. And this is why I believe nationalism connects us all together. So, now that I know you guys are cool, let me tell you a story. It's a story about my grandfather and how in the mid-20th century, with his actions, he managed to influence me in the 21st century. April 9, 1944, margin of error three to five days. My grandfather had just traveled across the Pacific Ocean to go from the Philippines to Hawaii to start his new life. He believed that in Hawaii, i.e. the United States, he could start a new life with a new business, life, family, all with a relatively low overhead cost that he couldn't start within the Philippines. Needless to say, my grandfather's belief was right, because within a year of his coming, he was able to start and fund his very own Puyo, very own Puyo store, shown behind me. But you see, the interesting part about his story is actually the fact that he was able to do this. As a middle-aged Filipino man with a lack of food, funds, and family, he was able to travel across an entire ocean and start his new life with a relatively little amount of capital in the process. And he was able to pursue his dream. But you see, that's the most important part of his story, his dream. More commonly known today as the American dream, it's what drove millions of immigrants throughout most of the 20th century from their respective countries to America to start new lives, because they believed they could come here and they could lead these lives of prosperity and luxury. In this way, the American dream acts out as the beginnings of nationalism within our society. Which leads me to believe in the one simple phrase, and this is how I believe nationalism connects us all together. And it can be summarized as the following. All citizens, despite the cultures that they belong to, are all connected by the sociological institution of nationalism. Or to try to get rid of the stuffy words, I believe that nationalism is what brings us all together. The belief that even if I may not know you personally, I still can relate with you because you're an American and so am I. In this sense, nationalism plays a very important part of how we run things. It also connects us all together because we can identify with ourselves as Americans and label and connect with other nations and various peoples in a way creating a complex network of all these different peoples and connecting us all. Sociology defines this as interconnectedness. More commonly, or to make the definition a little bit more clear, when two groups come together and form a conglomerate, but with each group having uh, one cons uh, constituents of autonomous governmental bodies, example given the United States. As sociology states, every single autonomous governmental body is held together through nationalism. And in this sense, nationalism plays a very important part. But to try to make this definition and uh, term a little bit more clear, let me try to give an example to try to illustrate it. Imagine what happens if the United States were the ununited states, if the 50 states that made up America were divided into 50 completely individual states. Globally, the politics would be screwed up, to say the least. But interconnectedness shows that America would no longer be, be able to be an autonomous individual state, and thereby nationalism plays a very important part in the fact that it keeps us together. Now, historically, we can see that nationalism played a very important part in a militaristic sense as well, too. Take, for example, early 19th century with France. When Napoleon was having troubles with his wars in Europe and Africa, he knew that he had to amp up his game with the morale of his troops. So what did he do? He knew that he needed to instill a mission into them and give them a clear sense of direction. So he gave them nationalism. And within a year of his doing this, he made France into the most capable military state possible. Also, if we look forward into history and we look at World War II, what we can see is that America used nationalism in a militaristic sense as well, too. For this, we can look at the 442nd Regiment. 
For those of you who don't know who they are, they were arguably the most successful military unit during their time. They had earned the most medals of honors than any other military unit in history. But they, similar to that of many other military units, pulled on their sense of nationalism while fighting. The interesting part about this is that when they were fighting, the thing that kept them together the most wasn't the fact that they shed the same blood on the same battlefield. No, it was the fact that they fought for the same ideals and beliefs, i.e. nationalism. And in this sense, nationalism plays a very important part for both the 442nd and uh, France's military during the early 19th century. And we can see that nationalism is important in a military sense. But this leads to an interesting question. Do we use nationalism for our common day society as well, too? And I found that, yes, we do. When we stand up during a football game and we put our right hands over our hearts, it's a great example of nationalism in play. The aforementioned holidays that I mentioned earlier within the speech are also great examples of nationalism as well. And because of this, we can find that nationalism plays a very important part in the society that we live in today. So my call to action for every single one of you is simple. Do the simple things in society. Love your country, respect your community, and respect the armed services of those who are serving as of now. And ultimately, think about what being American means to you. Thank you.